Hello, my name is Professor Linda Griffith and I'm here at MIT in the Department of Biological Engineering to tell you a little bit about my laboratory which focuses on tissue engineering, biomaterials, and organs on chips. But more and more and more there's an emphasis on building true three-dimensional organ-like structures. Now these aren't true whole organs and they're not meant to be. They're meant to represent the key processes going on in an organ system that would help us understand the human state. The human state being a disease process or how that organ might respond to drugs. So for example in my laboratory for many years we've been developing three-dimensional liver systems and not just with the main cell, the hepatocyte that metabolizes drugs and makes proteins, but all these other cell types that help uh, the whole ecosystem of the liver carry out its function. One of our major projects in the lab is developing a human on a chip. Um, what this means essentially is that we're developing um, multiple different tissue models of each organ and trying to integrate them uh, fluidically so that they can interact the same way they would in your body. So we're allowing uh, these different tissue models to communicate via hormones and secreted chemicals uh, the same way that they would um, when they're connected via the blood uh, in your body. So we have a team uh, of people for each organ to do development of the tissue, um, develop biomarkers so that we can track and understand the health of each tissue even when they're all mixed together um, so we can pick out the, the different components of each. Um, so we have a, a, usually a postdoc and a lab technician uh, doing the development for each tissue. Um, those people will come together uh, in sort of a coordinated dance uh, where we combine them all into this sort of hardware system that we've developed to fluidically link all of the systems together. So we want to have the cell types present that are most critical to the questions that we're asking biologically um, and a tissue that's large enough to sort of recapitulate the functions of that organ. Um, so these are very small, you know, the size of a pea or smaller 3D scaffolds of cells that recapitulate the functions of that organ, be it the brain, the heart, the pancreas, the liver. So one of the challenges that our lab uh, primarily tries to address is the challenge of vascularization in in vitro models. It's a very hard thing that the field's been trying to do for decades um, with relatively limited success. Um, and there are sort of two approaches to take to that. Uh, one of those is to vascularize thick tissues in situ and try to grow blood vessels in the lab. Um, the other approach uh, is to sort of manually insert those by either fabricating a scaffold uh, or putting your cells around a scaffold that's already in existence. So um, this machine behind us um, is a projection stereolithography printer, um, which allows us to print at single micron resolution. Um, and we're using it right now to create perfused scaffolds that we can use to grow thick tissues up to a millimeter uh, in thickness, which is about 10 times the current limit of uh, basic tissue engineering. Um, and so we can print, this is a 60x scaled up uh, version uh, of one of the perfused sort of uh, liver holding scaffolds that we have. Um, we can use these to seed cells in a very densely packed tissue, but still uh, leave space for perfusion of media to deliver oxygen and nutrients uh, and overcome that diffusion limit without the need for uh, development of blood vessels right away. So the way the system works, we have a three layer um, hardware platform. The top layer holds the fluid and maintains sterility. The bottom layer is an acrylic uh, manifold that delivers pressurized air and vacuum um, to the pump locations under the plate. Um, beneath the plate and sandwiched between the plates is uh, an elastic membrane that seals the fluid channels and also provides the actuation layer for the pump. Um, as air and vacuum are pumped into these lines that run along the length of the acrylic plate, uh, air is channeled through a via into the pump chambers themselves and pushes the membrane into or out of uh, the fluidic plate. This forces fluid along, um, it's a peristaltic pump, so it provides a discrete uh, known displacement per second, so we can control the pump rate very accurately and use that to individually control the mixing within and the mixing between uh, each organ system. That allows us to generate very physiological uh, biodistribution profiles of drugs or secreted factors in the system, um, which is a, do a degree of control that most systems don't have. Uh, some of our early findings, especially with smaller order systems where we can more accurately understand what's going on, have shown that there is def definitely differential regulation of these systems when they're in uh, unison with one another. Um, just as an example, 
when we looked at just the gut and the liver systems together, we found that when combined, they had a different and often hundredfold change in responses to things like inflammation uh, when they were together versus when they were isolated from one another. And so this gives us hope and is kind of encouraging that, yes, there is a very important facet of biology that we don't yet understand fully uh, that can really only be studied in multi-organ systems like this. This should help drug companies fail faster and fail cheaper um, and find the one or two candidates that they really think uh, are valuable for, for clinical testing um, at a much lower cost and much faster. Um, so we think that there's a lot of benefit to this clinically um, as sort of a bridge between the in vitro and in vivo model systems. Before we build anything in the lab, we think very, very hard about the physiological process we're trying to mimic in culture, and we develop design principles by studying how these physiological processes play out in humans. And it's only after building really powerful models of the human condition that we then design our in vitro organs and our interconnected in vitro organ systems. We try to use the knowledge that we have from in vivo physiology um, and use this in mathematical models to design these MPSs in the first place so that we do the experiments here in the lab and we get the results um, that we have something that is more predictive than if we translate these results back into humans that is more predictive of um, clinical outcome. We have a lot of information and knowledge about human physiology for example we know how many cells we have in the liver for example we know the organ volumes and blood flows to these organs so we use this knowledge and leverage the information we have to design something that is more physiologically relevant and then um, you guys in the lab actually perform the experiments, you connect all these organs together and do a great job in providing us modelers with the information and the data we need um, to then fill in these models and make some successful predictions. It's like a, it's like a nice um, connection and workflow between the lab guys and us modelers so we, we, we meet regularly, we talk about what they can do, what we need and vice versa because you know we don't have the actual lab experience so uh, we might think about that coming in every five minutes and taking a sample is appropriate but at the other time that puts a lot of work and constraint onto the um, lab guys so we, so we talk and find a common, common uh, sense there. We have practical constraints on for example how fast to operate um, the platforms but we can, we can optimize these flow rates and we, we can kind of predict um, at what point we have a certain concentration and whether that's sufficient or not to then do um, subsequent experiments for that. So there's a real merger in this laboratory of folks who know clinical medicine, basic biology, but also material science, devices, and uh, reaction engineering and things that are needed to design these devices. All of these have to be brought together in the same place, and that's really expensive, okay? So there's not a lot of places that bring together the whole spectrum of the modeling and computer science, the devices, the cell biology, the clinical medicine. And so there's more and more efforts to build teams that can do this across an individual institution or multi-institution and even multinational teams. It's a very exciting time for the field.